Okay, welcome back. In the last video, we implemented a line trace which we're performing every frame, and each time we hit an actor, we're casting it to an item and accessing that item's widget so we can set its visibility to true. So if I hover over our weapon, then we show the widget. Now when we did this, we created a function called trace under crosshairs, which does what it sounds. It traces under the crosshairs straight out into the world to see if we're looking at something directly under the crosshairs. Now this does something extremely similar to what we're doing when we fire our weapon. So we can probably use this function in our weapon firing functionality as well. So let's take a look. Recall in shooter character, we have a function called get beam end location. And that function get beam end location results in the location that we need to spawn our impact particles for our weapon firing, as well as the end location for our beam, which is the smoke beam particles. So if we go to get beam end location, here we see some of the same code that we used in the trace under crosshairs function. So it seems like we can actually clean this up a little bit and reuse that function trace under crosshairs because we're essentially tracing under the crosshairs and storing that hit result. And then we're performing a second trace from the barrel. And if there's a blocking hit, then we're instead using the location of that hit result. So let's see if we can fix this function so that it uses our new function trace under crosshairs. So get beam end location first needs to call trace under crosshairs. So we're going to create an F hit result called crosshair hit result. And we'll create a bool called B crosshair hit and set it equal to the return value from trace under crosshairs. And trace under crosshairs takes the hit result, so we're going to use crosshair hit result. So we'll comment this and we'll say check for crosshair trace hit. Now we're going to see if B crosshair hit, in which case we hit something, so our out beam location is tentatively the location of this hit. So we're going to say out beam location equals crosshair hit result dot location. Now this is tentative because we still haven't checked to see if something exists between the gun barrel and our hit result. So we're going to say tentative beam location, but we still need to trace from the gun barrel. So still need to trace from gun. Now, if this trace does not hit anything, we'll have an else here. And here we can say no crosshair trace hit. Now in that case, we still need to set out beam location and that should be the end point of our trace because we still need to trace from the gun barrel to the end point to see if there's any objects between the gun barrel and the end point from the crosshair trace. So trace under crosshairs should also take an F vector that it can set in the case where there is no trace hit. So that way the vector can still have the end location. So in shooter character.h for trace under crosshairs, let's add another input parameter of type F vector. It's going to be a reference and it's going to be called out hit location. And in the definition for trace under crosshairs, we'll go down here to trace under crosshairs and we'll add that new input parameter f vector out hit location and when we're setting up our line trace we first have our end location for the trace and I'm going to set out hit location equal to this end location however if we get a blocking hit then we can update that out hit location by setting it equal to the out hit result location. So this way, whether we get a blocking hit or not, at least out hit location 
we'll have something populating it so that we can use it for our beam end location. So back up here and get beam end location. Now when we call trace under crosshairs, we can pass in out beam end location into this function. And now we know if we get a crosshair hit, we're gonna set out beam location equal to that hit location. But if we don't get a hit, at least we still know that out beam location will contain the end location for the line trace. So we don't actually need to set it to anything here. We don't need to do anything, but I'm gonna create a comment for us just so we understand that out beam location is the end location for the line trace. Okay, so we've performed the first line trace and out beam location is either the location of the hit object if we hit one, or if we didn't hit one, it's the location of the end point for that trace. Now we're ready to perform the second trace, perform trace from gun barrel. Now for this trace, we already have the code for this. If we scroll down, we'll see after we traced the first time, now we perform a second trace, this time from the gun barrel. And we create a hit result. We create a start location, which is the muzzle socket location that's passed into this function. And we have a weapon trace end location, that's the out beam location. And then we perform this trace. And if we get a blocking hit, then we update out beam location. We can copy all this code. And back up here, we can paste it here. So I didn't even need to make this comment. Even that I've, I've copied. Now, if this weapon trace hit is successful, if we actually hit something between the barrel and the beam end point, then we can not only update beam end location, but we can return true. Otherwise, we'll reach the end of this function and return false. And then everything else after this is just old code that we can delete And now our get beam end location is a lot cleaner. So to recap, what we're doing is we're performing our first trace hit under the crosshairs. If we get a crosshair hit, then our out beam end location will be the location of that hit tentatively because we still haven't performed our second trace. But if there was no hit, at least out beam location will be updated to the end of that first trace. So it will be straight out from the crosshairs 50,000 units into the world. So the next step is to perform the second trace and we end up updating out beam location there. So this is a good refactoring of get beam end location and reusing this trace under crosshairs function that we used for tracing for the item in the last video so that we could display that pickup widget. So we can go ahead and finally compile this and test out our shooting capabilities to make sure that it's working properly. Okay, so I'm getting a compile error and it's, uh, I see one thing here, shooter character trace under crosshairs function does not take one arguments. And it's pointing at line 434, which we call trace under crosshairs here uh, without passing in a input parameter. When we call trace under crosshairs in the tick function for our widget component, we don't really need that location. But what we can do is we can simply create an F vector called hit location, and we can pass that in. And even though it'll be filled in with the hit location, we don't really care, we're not gonna use it. We're just passing it in to satisfy the function parameters. So let's go ahead and compile this. Okay, we've succeeded compilation. Now we're gonna test out weapon firing. We just wanna see that it's actually firing. See if I shoot just past the computer, I'll hit the wall. But if I shoot aiming at the wall and the computer corner of the monitor is just in between the crosshairs trace it to the wall and the barrel, well then the trace from the barrel towards that crosshairs hit target will hit the monitor and we won't pass through the monitor. So that is perfect. So that will conclude this video. In this video, we refactored the 
get beam end location, having it use our new trace under crosshairs function that we're using here in tick. Now before we wrap this up, I want to point out one small issue. And we can see that issue if we aim at a surface such as this wall here, and we shoot some rounds very rapidly. And we'll see that some of our rounds are making it and some of our rounds are not. And the reason for this is simple. Our first trace starts at the crosshairs world location and goes out for 50,000 units. But the second trace goes from the barrel to the first trace hit. That's a lot shorter than 50,000 units. That line trace goes all the way up to the surface that was hit and no farther. That line trace is not reaching all the way to the wall. So we need to extend the second line trace a little farther. And we can do so like this. Here's our code for the second line trace. We have our start location, weapon trace start, and that's simply the muzzle socket location. And then we have the end location for the trace, weapon trace end, and that's out beam location, which is set to the hit result location of the first trace hit. But we need to push this out a bit further. So what I'm gonna do is create a vector from the barrel to the out beam location and I can get that in the following way. Const f vector, and I'll call this start to end. And start to end can simply be out beam location minus muzzle socket location. Out beam location minus muzzle socket location is the vector from muzzle socket location to out beam location. Now, weapon trace end can simply be set to muzzle socket location plus start to end times 1.25F. What this does is it makes our line trace 25% longer. Instead of stopping at the previous hit result location, we're going past that, so we'll be sure to hit the target. Now we can compile this. And now we'll see that we get a hit result each time. So this is much more reliable. I'll see you in the next video.